What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Linked Up Church online experience. We're so glad that you've chosen to connect with us today. Before we jump into the message, we wanted to let you know that we have a ton of great content for the whole family. We have great videos for your small children in the Little Linkland section, for your kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. We'd love to be a blessing to your whole family, so check out these videos when you can. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. Now, let's get started. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verses 19 and 20. If you were not here or you did not listen, listen to or uh, get last week's message, I encourage you to do that. Listen, it's on our catalog of messages. But uh, we're picking up from there. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time recapping. But in brief, foundation scripture from what Pastor Gregory was uh, ministering when he ministered on Choose Life. It says, I call to heaven and earth to witness against you today. This is God speaking. I place before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose life so that you and your children may live and love God, your God, and listen obediently to him, firmly embracing him. That is the message version of this scripture. I'm going to say that last part again. Listening obediently to him. Firmly embracing him. In other words, what he's expounding on is one thing to choose God. But in choosing God, you are also choosing to obediently listen to him and firmly embrace him. Amen. We know a lot of people that says, Jesus. Jesus. How did that first song go today? Jesus is what? The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Je I can't even get the rhythm name of Jesus. You know, a whole bunch, a lot of people singing this song, all kinds of songs. But Jesus isn't really Lord. All right, so we're going get, to get down to the nitty gritty. We talked about last week when I asked you, where did you find yourself on this trend? We talked about the rise and fall of empires. I'm not talking about nations and powers, but empires, mighty empires that ruled land mass, people, government, finances, society. We talked about the rise and fall of these empires, and it's cyclic. And every empire had a, an estimated or an average lifespan of about 205 years. And America right now is an empire. We might not use that term today, but it is a global power. And we have existed far beyond that 205 years. But we find ourselves nonetheless in this same cycle. But if it's happening to an empire, if it's happening to a country, it's happening to a community. If it's happening to a community, it's happening to a family. If it's happening to a family, it's happening to you. So what we talked about were the nine stages of this rise and fall. Number one, we go from bondage to spiritual faith. The people go from bondage to spiritual faith. They get tired, sick and tired of being sick and tired. They dig deep into faith, and then they have a, what they call a spiritual rebellion. Number two, spiritual faith leads to great courage. And in that faith, they muster up the courage to say no to fear, to say no to doubt, and say yes to what's ahead of me. Even if I don't know what it is, it's got to be better than this. Yes. Yes. And then from great courage, they go to freedom, liberty. Liberty. Free at last. Free at last. I thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Only for that freedom, number four, to go to abundance. Because in our liberty, in our freedom, we get to make choices. And in those choices, we get to either choose life and prosperity. Prosperity is not just money, y'all. Right. The 411 is that prosperity is nothing broken, nothing missing. And in that prosperity... Or abundance, number five, we go from abundance if we're not careful to selfishness. Me and my four and no more. We can go from selfishness, always trying to get the next thing. And then if we're not careful, number six, from selfishness to complacency. <laughs> if it ain't affecting me, I don't care. It's not my business. 
How many of you have heard or said that? It's not my business. But if you witnessed it, if it's affecting your neighbor, it's your business. From complacency to apathy, now you just don't care. I do what I do to get what I need, and I'm out. I'm a nine to five, and that's it. I'm not giving no more, no less. Apathy, let them figure it out. And then from apathy to dependence, I mentioned that stimulus check. Some of us is ready to fight and wage war <laughs> over a stimulus check. We got folks going to jail stealing social security numbers. Dependence, whether it's dependence on the government, dependence on your job, dependence on your hello spouse. There's an interdependence, but codependency is dangerous. And then when you're dependent on somebody, anybody besides God, it eventually leads right back to bondage. Right back to bondage. So I asked the question, where might you be in this cycle? Where might you be in your relationships? Where might you be in your finance? Where might you be in your uh, calling? Where might you be in your purpose? Where might you be? Because remember I said, it starts with an individual. Then that individual impacts a family. Then that family, it, it impacts a community. That community impacts a region. That region impacts the empire, okay? So again, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today. I place before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Choose life, and I'm simply calling this choose, because I don't care no matter where you are in this cycle, whether it's on the best side of prosperity, abundance, and liberty, or whether it's on the other side of selfishness and dependence, you can make your next choice be a good choice to get out or arise up wherever you are. And guess what? Wherever you are right now, it's not where good God really called you. You are better than where you are. I just got through hearing that in three conferences. I tell you, my doctor gave me the travel lift July 6th. And once he said, okay, you can drive and you can do, boy, we, I've been going ever since. We got one more trip in us, six trips in seven weeks. Woo. But I'm racking my Delta miles. <laughs> All right. Now, we also talked about some statistics. And these statistics were lightly slighted on a negative side. And, and these statistics I'm about to share a repeat, bear to be repeated. But I'm going to lighten it up in a little bit. Lifeway Research, which is one of the largest uh, research uh, organizations in America, or actually globally, they said 58% of the Christians feel comfortable feeling, uh, sharing their faith, just sharing their faith. Only 58%. 78%, however, seldom do. They say they're comfortable, but they seldom do, 78%. 59% never invited anyone to church. 66% of teens drop out of church once they become young adults and out of their parents' houses. I feel the glory of the Lord. As Christians, it was out of Jesus' own mouth in Mark 16 that we are commissioned in, to go and make disciples. And in making disciples, do you build the church? It is not up to the pastor to go out and witness to everybody. It's up to the pastor to sharpen you, to give you information, and for you to dive deeper into it to make it your own. See, the Word of God can be taught, but your spirit man, the things that the spirit wants you to receive for yourself is what's caught. And that catching is often done in the multitude, in the company of one, right? And so when we fail to take what's in us and share it, we let down the Great Commission. We let down the very God that called us out of darkness into his dear light. When he says that you are salt and light, you preserve life. 
I truly believe with all my heart that America has been sustained as a superpower because of the salt and the light that continues to fight. Because God only needs, he's already proved. I said last week 30%. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I misquoted that. 3%. If he has 3% of the population, y'all remember Abraham, God dealing with Abraham about Lot? If he has 3%, he'll save the region. He's got more, he's gonna preserve his remnant. But that remnant gotta fight. And I believe that remnant is listening and here right now. Let me share with you a story that was told to me. Gentleman tells me, if you're here in the room, I'm about to repeat your story. And I don't know if I got permission, but I think it's a great testimony, um, and you're so happy about it, so I'm going to take the liberty. Um, or if you're watching. Person says, I live in a cul-de-sac. On one side, I, 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 in that cul-de-sac, of course, there's about, I, he said, I think he said about six or eight neighbors in that cul-de-sac. They all know each other, but they, they just speak, and that's it. But it was impressed upon his spirit to minister to him, but he just didn't. He just didn't, you know, their life is their business because he saw that some of their ways was just kind of, you know, peculiar, just, just not right. And so what ended up happening, I don't remember the circumstances, but the house next door to him ended up burning down and the fire caused part of his house to burn down. It was that bad. Come to find out that it was a fight and it was an arson for one spouse retaliating against another. And so he knew that he should have ministered to that neighbor and at least tried because he didn't know if his trying would have made a difference. So then it was pricked in him to go ahead and start ministering to the other one of the other neighbors. I can't remember if it was directly next door to him or near him. And then so it was pricked in him after that catastrophe to minister to that neighbor. Not just, you know, Jesus is Lord, where you going to go if you die today? It wasn't that just just loving on him. Just, hey, how you doing? moving his garbage can, uh, you know, being willing to grab his mail when he was out of town, whatever the case may be. Sometime later, the neighbor comes to him and says, you know what? You know, thank you for being who you are and for just, because they've had conversations and for being, um, you know, just, just a good guy. You're a really good guy. Thank you. And he's like, okay, good. Finds out later that this dude had been dealing with addiction and had been in that addiction, he was clouding up not only the abuse he had suffered, but he was being abusive. And he had been delivered because this person turned them on to church. Amen. So, you know, your existence, your mere existence and willingness to shine makes a difference it makes a difference and you don't get to choose who you're impacting how about that you don't get to choose who you are impacting people are watching you my husband and i go places all the time some of y'all sit and lay back in the thick and just be watching us But guess who else is watching you? So now we pick up with Jude. Jude chapter 1. Or Jude 1. There's only one letter, one chapter in Jude. But Jude verse 1. This is a charge to the believers. This is an itty bitty little book. And see, an itty bitty little book that was selected and written to be a part of of this book of instructions before leaving earth. That's, what, that's my acronym for the Bible. The book of instructions before leaving earth. And this little book is so significant and it's so profoundly accurate. Not only what was going on in that day, but what's going on even today. And it's a humble book, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Starting with Jude chapter, uh, Jude 1, he says, from Judah, I'm not reading from this, uh, the Passion, a loving servant of Jesus, the anointed one, the brother of James, I'm writing to the chosen ones who are wrapped in the love of Father God, kept and guarded for Jesus the Messiah. Number one in this 
sharing of the faith, in this choosing, in this, in this avoiding or, or, or not getting caught up in the cycle, but living in abundance. Abundance of spirituality, abundance of love, abundance of confidence in who he is in you and who you are in him, abundance of peace, abundance of divine health, abundance of prayers answered, abundance of the fruit of the spirit. Here are some quick, quick keys. Number one, know your spiritual identity. Know your spiritual identity. The devil is the master of identi identification theft. He is the master of ID theft. He will convince you that you're not good enough. He will convince you that you don't know enough. He will convince you that you were a mistake. He will convince you that you can't get out. He will try to convince you that you're stuck. He will try to convince you, come on, don't clap. Because he will try to convince you of this. It's nothing to clap about. It's something to stomp about. He's trying to bring you down to where he is so you can go where he went. And if you don't know your spiritual identity, yeah, no, no, let me submit this to you. Maybe you were a mistake. Maybe you don't know enough. Maybe you aren't good enough. Maybe you aren't tall enough, short enough, light enough, dark enough, whatever the case may be. But see, there's this person called the Holy Spirit that smeared on inward dwelling upon living on us that makes up the gap spiritually. See, when he made us righteous, he didn't make us, make us partway righteous. He made us all the way righteous. And when he made us all the way righteous, he made us, by his grace, by his mercy, good enough, capable, smart enough. See, what we miss about this here introduction in Judah 1, Jude 1, is that he announces himself first as being the servant of Jesus, the anointed one. He lets it be known, I am the servant of Jesus. I am called to make known his message. In this little bitty letter, I am called to profoundly impact you, community, and region for the cause of Christ. But see, what he says on the other side of that is, I'm the brother of James. Wait, hold up. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So what is it? What, what, what's that? What's that? Who cares you to brother James? Okay, so and what? But see, when you dig into it, the great majority of theologians and historians and archaeologists, when they dug it all up, see, James was the half-brother of Jesus, which made Jude the half-brother of Jesus and the full brother of, J of James. So he didn't think his position, his relationship on this earth superior to his relationship spiritually necessary to address. See, all too often we get caught up in, in, in make familiarity necess necessary. Only my dad used to say it all the time. Overfamiliarity breeds contempt. And even the disciples, after some time, just took for granted who Jesus was in the earth. We can't take for granted what happened on that cross. We can't take for granted the beating that he took. We can't take for granted the blood that was shed. We can't take for granted the body that was broken. We can't take for granted those three nails. We can't take for granted, hello, that empty cross. We can't take for granted the time he spent on the earth. We can't take for granted his message to the people. We can't take for granted his resurrected body. We can't take for granted what he tried to prove to Stephen. We can't take for granted the word of God. We can't take for granted, according to Minister David, what he left behind, the Holy Spirit. So when you know your spiritual identity, 
There's a swag about you. Though the weapon may form, it shall not prosper. There's this confidence. Once your confidence has been exhausted, there's this confidence. I'm going to tell a, ter a personal story. Babe, I didn't ask you about it, but I'm going to tell it, okay? <laughs> you know, I'm very black and, black and white. I am. I just say what it is. 2013, September, 2013, September 16th. It was a Friday afternoon. And we were having this conversation with who was at that time our superior, our pastor, and our boss. And we're having this conversation, and I knew in my spirit the morning of that this was not going to be the day that my husband had expected. I knew it. I mean, I knew it in my sha -na, na I knew it in my gut. So much so I called my bestie and I told her, I said, I said April, this is going to be some kind of day. Girl, it'll be okay because everybody knew promotion was on the horizon. God has supernaturally accomplished everything that we were assigned to do. And then the conversation turned sharply in another direction. And I knew we were about to be fired. I knew it's coming. And a part of me wanted to just almost plead for another opportunity. Because that flesh was rising up. That flesh was saying, okay, we, our resources, I mean, our, our, our paycheck, our, our calling, our influence, our reputation, our, a whole bunch of our. But there was this rising up in me. I mean, it came from the depths of my soul, rising up with me. And I heard Holy Spirit tell me, who do you trust? Who do you trust? If you are innocent before me, that's all that matters. So I had some, a few words. I said what I had to say in a situation. Because you know, us ladies, you, you, you know, amen. <laughs> so when you know your identity, guess what? Yeah, you're weird. You stand out. You're unusual. God says you're a royal priesthood, a called out chosen generation. He says that you are victorious. I mean, ain't, ain't nothing sexy about choosing to tell the truth instead of backstab. There's nothing, you know, sweet about taking the high road when other people are taking the low road, which seems faster. But when you know that you were created to love, when you know that you were created for service, when you know that you were created with joy, you were created to give, you were created by way of excellence, then there's a higher power. When you know that you are blessed, I've been blessed up, I've been broke down. Some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. So I, I wrote this, I really wrote this song down. Some of y'all know this one though. Ask me how I'm doing, I'm blessed. Yes, living every moment, no regrets. Smile upon her face, I'm like, ooh, yes, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed, yes. Wake <laughs> you know I'm gonna try to sing. <laughs> Number two, y'all quit it. Audrey, stop it. Number two, fight. Fight. And this is the drive of this whole entire letter in verse number three, fight. The message says, dear friends, I've dropped everything to write to you about this life of salvation that we have in common. To have, I have to write insisting, begging that you fight with everything you have in you for this faith entrusted to us as a gift to guard and to cherish. King James says to contend for the faith. Listen, if there was ever a time for you to stand up and be righteous, for you to stand up for your faith, it is now. 
We have organizations, we have movements right now that's heading the, the planet straight to hell. And if you don't take your place, and if you don't obey, if you don't obediently obey him and embrace him, like Deuteronomy says, then you'll wonder why people are operating the curse. And that curse will impact you. So what you going to be, the impactor or the impacted? If you don't understand that you will be misunderstood, if you don't understand that you will be misrepresented, if you don't understand that people won't like you, then you don't understand that you're in a fight. You're in a fight for your family. You're in a fight for your community. You're in a fight for your region. You're in a fight for your workplace. You're in a, you're in a fight. And the thing about the fight that you're in, when you decide to function in it, you win. You win. You will slay the giant. You will kill the lion. You will escape destruction and save many a people because of your willingness to fight. You carry the word of faith in your mouth. And if it's in your heart, you are to share it. You online are to share it. You are to make known the goodness of Jesus. You don't have to be able to exegete the Bible. Amen. Don't know why. Don't, listen, we don't, they don't want to hear you preaching. That's right. Half of y'all want to hear me preaching right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <clears throat> so you got to fight. Oh. I got to share this example. There was a man that shared a story at one of the uh, uh, workshops and conferences that I went to, and I, went, I thought this story was so good. He was sharing how uh, he was very, very busy. It was a season of him being very busy, and, um, but, uh, and he had been eyeing this here conference and this leader that he wanted to go listen to, and he had been eyeing it for some time, but you know he just never made some time to go, go there. And just so happened, his friend called, and his friend's like, dude, I got an extra ticket to go this here, to this here conference. And um, I wanted to know, you know, I was just led and just wanted to know if you wanted to go to it. This is a secular guy. This is not at a church conference, a secular guy. And so the guy was like, oh, yeah, I want to go. I want to go. I've been wanting to go. And the, his friend was like, but there's one issue. He said, what? It's in two days. It's like, oh, man. Okay, let me see what I can do. He rearranges his schedule. And, and he makes clear his schedule so he could attend this here conference. And so he calls the guy back and says, okay, I'm in, I'm in. Okay, now we got to find a place to stay. All right, all right, let's do it. And so he, they go and they're looking for a place to stay. And um, they pick this four and a half star hotel. And they get their flights and everything else. And they go. And they get to hotel. Now, he usually stays at one brand of hotel. But his friend chose this other brand because everywhere else, was, all the other lodging was booked. And so it was a four and a half star, pictures online, because you know pictures online, they can make it look good. <laughs> and they go to this here hotel, and this guy, he's like, dog, did you say this is a four and a half star? He said, yeah. He said, it must have been four and a half star when they built it. <laughs> and he's like, it smells, and, and, and we had to wait so long, and he's complaining about all that's going on. The water takes too long to get hot. My bed ain't comfortable. The rug is tattered. Doggone, you sure this is four and a half star? He said, yeah. And so he's up here trying to, you know, get other places. But the other places was by this time for this conference, what was left was like expensive, like $1,000 a night expensive. And so he said, okay. So he's steady complaining. And he even was complaining inside. You know, that inside complaining. Yeah. You want to be thankful because the dude put it together. But, you know, you, you complain on the inside. And he said he heard within him the Spirit of God say to him, because he was a Christian, don't complain about where you are unless you're willing to pay for where you want to be. <laughs> so in your fighting, don't complain about what's going on unless you're willing to pay and be what you needed to be. Number three, remember. Remember. See, in, this, in the next section of Jude, 
when you get beyond four all the way down to near the bottom, he is going through all that God did to people who betrayed, who rebelled, who retaliated, who, di who, dis who disobeyed. He saved, but some rejected him and were destroyed. He called, but some rebelled. He created, but some abused. But God. And so when you think about who God is, and you remember what he promised. See, if you don't spend time with his word, you don't know. And I said it's one thing to be ignorant, but it's another thing to choose to be ignorant. When the formula is there, but you choose to ignore it, and you know it's there. See, the word of God, is, it has been a treasure. Evil men have hidden it. They knew it inside and out, but they hid it because they wanted to selfishly possess the secrets to success. Because, see, the principles of God will work. They're in the earth. He created the earth to respond. And just because you see and you, you, you want to see it before you believe it, oftentimes, no, spiritually things are working. Right now, there are angels dispatched. Those of you that prayed and, and know you have angels, they're dispatched right now, moving in the hearts of men and women for your favor, for your opportunity, for your grace, for the mercy you need. There are angels right now maneuvering and, and situating situations. There are angels right now creating situations so that your contract can move to the front. So that your house can close on time. So that your children will get right back where they need to be. He says in Romans 15, in Romans 11, 5, that, uh, that, the, that God's grace empowers us as his chosen remnant. Romans 11.5 says that God's grace empowers us as his chosen remnant. And you can't be a chosen remnant and not choose to be a remnant. So then we end up at this here, what is God doing? Remember, he said his promises are yes and amen. So let's talk about these positive statistics. I talked about some t statistics about, you know, people who were Christians who are w not willing to share their faith. Say, not me. not me. But when I looked up the reverse, when I looked up millionaires and billionaires and their religion, according to Fortune magazine, they said among millionaires and billionaires, 56.2% worldwide are Christian. When I looked up millionaires and billionaires, only 6.5% are Muslim. 3.9% are Hindu. 1.7% are Jew. Isn't that interesting? But 56.2% are Christian. When I looked up the lifespan of a Christian compared to other religions, this is according to NIH, the CDC, and Time Magazine, who are reporting on behalf of them. Christians live four to six years longer than any other religion. They are comparing diagnoses. They are comparing every situation. So the Christian that might have been diagnosed with cancer will still live anywhere from four to six years longer than the same type of person diagnosed with cancer. Marriages, even though they say marriage is 50% is just as equal in the church as it is in, in the world, the other part of that is that marriage, Christian marriages still last 27% longer than most other marriages. And almost 48% are less likely to divorce Amen. compared to other religions. So when you see the tangible benefits of who God is and what he promised. For those, those that have been successful, those that have lived, and you know, my spiritual mom who, who was excited to have celebrate 60, how long was mom married to Apostle Price? 63 years? 63 years, that's a long time. That's before I was born. When you think about, you know, my parents, saved, but even in their ignorance, made it 54 years. I can't say because my father was convicted that divorce was not an opportunity. 
you know, and when you remember who God is and you just exercise his principles, you just give to be given because you're a giver. You serve to be serving. You take advantage of what your church, your church, linked up church has to offer you. We try hard to leave you without excuse. There is GED classes if you have not received your high school diploma. Purpose Central is there so that you can learn English. If you have family and friends that don't know English as a second language to learn it. There are opportunities in your entrepreneurship. Someone not too long ago called me asking me a bunch of questions about their new business. I'm like, take entrepreneurial boot camp. Job link is there to make sure that you can optimize your job search opportunities. Leverage your compensation negotiation. Your church exists to serve you, but how many of you have taken advantage of it? It it hurt my heart to see people have withdrawn from financial peace. Listen, I don't want to pick on anybody, but you pay $25 for financial peace. Barring some extreme emergency, can't take it. Won't take it. Being ignorant is one thing, but choosing to be ignorant is something different. And if you just follow God, people, I'm waiting on God to tell me where to go. You will end up by mistake in the place of blessing. You will end up by mistake in the place of favor. You will end up by mistake in the place of prosperity. You will end up by mistake in the place of healing. Because if you are a child of Abraham, yeah. an heir, he said, wherever, just choose where you want to go, Abraham. And wherever your feet will try, there the blessings will be. <laughs> wherever you go, it's bound to prosper. Y'all remember Jacob, even in his foolery. It said nothing about God, but his heart, and he was part of a covenant. Because his daddy and his granddaddy was praying for him. Wherever he went, even though Laban tried to trip him up, he couldn't help to prosper. They kept trying to switch it up on him, but it kept living. It kept thriving. He kept having more cattle. His land kept producing crops. They couldn't take it. We just came back from this stretch conference, and um, and, and, and uh, Timmy... Uh, Pastor Timmy, I've known this young man since he was 12 years old. And this kid would be in the, in the room of his parents' house. I was there to see his parents because I was, uh, you know, uh, their, their agent. And we would go through contracts, but I would hear him in his room just clinking, clinking away, playing his uh, flute or whatever, whatever, whatever instrument he was playing. And it was just something that was in him. And he gets up there and he talks about, you know, how... Dr. Didi had some years ago, while her husband is on his deathbed, they tell him he's not going to live. She writes this here, uh, these lyrics, or this, what she thought was a poem or a journal entry. He sees it, turns it into a song, a Grammy-nominated song. She's not writing there. She's not there writing, saying, I'm going to make this a Grammy-nominated song. He will turn your most minimum efforts into something great. I'm going to share another one of their testimonies. He gets up there, and you know, if you all are familiar with Spirit of Faith, they, they have, Pastor Timmy has gone, uh, taken leaps and bounds to create great praise and worship experiences during COVID, during the lock-in. Up in the north, they were locked in a whole lot longer than we were. So he went through great lengths to create great praise and worship experiences. How does someone who just wants to serve their church with excellence... Step out behind, beyond the norm and be innovative. How do they get nominated and put into the Smithsonian off of some praise and worship? So when you go to the Civil Rights Museum in a few months, I think he said, you will see Spirit of Faith, City of Faith, praise and worship team on display as being a form of relief and joy during the COVID season. They ended up there by mistake. 
I talked to him. He said, I didn't even know that was a thing. Wasn't even looking for it. And then while, while they do their, their praise and worship during service, they call out our very own Minister Bernard. They kept calling him Saint Bernard. And, and, and Apostle Mike, Dr. Mike was like, boy, that boy, that boy got it right there. We want you to be great. We want you to shine. Ain't nobody hold nothing back from you. If that was there and they recognize that, don't you think the same spirit that is within that is within you? I got to wrap this up. I told my husband, babe, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to finish. Da, 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 da. I'm going to be finished on time. <laughs> I'm going to stop right here. I got four more points to go. Listen, follow me online. I'll, I'll start talking about in little quips online. Instagram, Facebook. I don't know nothing about TikTok, so don't do that. <laughs> my daughter won't teach me. But I want to end with this. He said, I place before you life and death. Choose life. And I don't know, I don't care how much death you may have experienced. When I say death, destruction, chaos, drama, sickness, disease, pain, trauma, hurt, neglect, abandonment. I don't care how much death you've experienced. You still today, right now, can choose life. And God will expedite your life choices. And you will land in places, baby girl, baby boy, that you never thought you would. You will end up blessed to be a blessing. And you will look around and say, how did I end up here? My husband talks about being this little 145-pound boy, having to put on sweatpants under his pants, digging for cans. How did he end up here? I'm a girl arrested in jail for beating up a cop. They tell the judge that she is a threat to society. We got to try her. How did I end up here? You know, there was a, I'll end right here with, with quoting this. I'm going to read it to you, then I'm going to want you to say it out, yourself, out your own mouth. It was brought back to my remembrance actually last night while I was studying. Because the synopsis of this fight, this contending for a fight, is right here. My husband and a group of teenagers wrote it. Actually, Jeff, you know Jeff Arnold, his, him and his brother sang it. At that time, it was called the G5G Creed. I rewrote it a little bit. But I'm going to read it to you, and I want you to listen, because this, and I, I, I'll post it, but I thought it was very, very relatable even right now. It says, I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I am saved and dangerous. I am radically committed. The Holy Spirit, the, I, I have the power of the Holy Spirit. The die is cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am now a disciple of his. I won't look back, slow down, slack up, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My presence makes sense, and my future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, small planning, smooth, mere clothes, dreams, tainted visions, mundane talking, chintzy giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need man's preeminence position, emotion, applause, or popularity. Jesus has made my life right, first, tops, and victorious. He is the one to be recognized, praised, regarded, and rewarded. I now live in his presence. I learn by faith. I love by patience. I lean in and by prayer. I labor by power. I have no doubts, no borders, no limits, and no fear. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is plain. My companions are few. 
My God is reliable and my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, diluted, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of adversity. I will not negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, meander and amaze at mediocrity. I will not give up. I won't shut up. I won't let up, slow down until I'm preached up, prayed up, stored up, and stayed up for the cause of Christ. My destiny is irrevocable. My call is unchangeable. My boldness is unstoppable. My passion is undeniable for I am a disciple of Christ. I must go until he comes. I must give until I'm on top. I must preach until all know and I will work until he stops. And when he comes, he will have no problem recognizing his own. He'll know linked up church. He'll know my community. He'll know my family. He'll know me. So, baby, if I can, for another four minutes, I want y'all to repeat this after me. And I want you to say it with something in your chest. Stand up, because you know you got a little bit more attitude. You don't, nobody fights sitting down. Repeat after me. I am a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I am saved and dangerous. I'm radically, I'm radically committed. I have Holy Spirit power. I have Holy Spirit power. The die is cast. The die is I've stepped cast. over the line. Over the, decision the, the decision has been made. I am now a disciple of His. I won't look back. Slow down. Slack up. Back away. Or be still. My past is redeemed. My presence makes sense. My future secure. My secure. I'm finished and done with low living. I'm finished and done with low living. Sidewalking. Sidewalking. Small planning. Small, planning. Small, small mirror colorless dreams. Tainted visions. Mundane talking. Chintzy giving. Chintzy and, and dwarf goals. I no longer need man's preeminence. No preeminence. Promotion. Promotion. Applause. Applause. Or popularity. or popularity. Jesus has made my life right, Jesus made my life right. First, first, tops, tops and, victorious. and victorious. He is the one to be recognized, to be recognized praised, praised, regarded, regarded and, rewarded. and rewarded. I now live in his presence, live in his presence. Learn, by faith, learn by faith, love by patience, love by patience lean, in by prayer, lean in by prayer and labor by power. By power. I have no doubts. I have no borders, no limits, no fear. My fate is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven, and my road is narrow. My way is plain. My companions may be few. My God is reliable, and my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, diluted, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the face of adversity, negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the pool of popularity, meander and amaze at mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, slow up, until I'm preached up, prayed up, stored up, and stayed up for the cause of Christ. My destiny is irrevocable. My call is unchangeable. My boldness is unstoppable. My passion is undeniable. For I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go until he comes. Give until I'm on top. Preach until all know. And work until he stops. And when he comes down to get his own, He'll no, have no problems recognizing me. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you that their mouths have declared and decreed a thing. 
So may it resonate as truth. May it resonate as a lifestyle of worship in their lives. May they go forward and be great. For you called them to be more than conquerors. So I thank you that you seal your word in their hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. While every head is bowed and while, every tongue, while everyone is standing still, no one's walking or talking unless you've been assigned to do so. This man named Jesus loved you until death. And he didn't stop there. He loved you to show you that death has no power. Destruction has no power. Chaos has no power. Trauma has no power. He rose again so that you could have life and life everlasting. This man named Jesus loved you to death. If you've not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you. If you're not sure that you're saved, you can't take this message and just when someone asks, where in the Bible does it say? You can't take them to Romans. I want to pray for you and give you that information. Or perhaps, and I know this is a fact, you've been living your life your way, getting your results, and you don't like your results. There's a God that loved you to death and resurrected life. And even though your circumstances may, may look dead, he says that he can make a way out of no way. He is a strong tower. So he's forever married to you. So if you know you've been out of fellowship, that's what we call it. Some people call it backslidden. I want to pray for you. Or perhaps you have not planted yourself in a church home. If that's you, I want to give you more information about that. If you believe Linked Up Church is the place you're supposed to be, you believe that Pastor Gregory and I will be your shepherds and you will honor us by allowing us to serve you, we promise you we will teach you the Word of God. Our staff will bring you the Word of God and the Word of God only pray for you. We're here to serve you. So if you want to make Linked Up Church your church home, I want to pray with you and give you that information as well. So while every head is bowed, no one moving or walking. If that's you, would you please lift your head high up in the air so that I know I'm praying with and for you. You've not received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I see those hands over there. You know you're out of fellowship and you want to get back right with God. Or you want to make Linked Up Church your church home. I want to pray with you. If you would lift your hand up high up in the air so I know I'm praying with you. I saw the few back in the back. I see the few over up in the risers. Praise God. This is your day. The time is now. The decision is yours. And he's waiting to prosper you wherever you go. He don't want you to be perfect. He just wants you to be his. He does not need perfection. He needs you. For those of you that raised your hands or you know you should have raised your hands but you didn't, would you please make your way out to the nearest aisle and come right down here to the front so that I can pray with and for you while we applaud and cheer you on. If you raised your hand or you know you didn't but you, you know you should have, come on down now in Jesus' name. Come on down now in Jesus' name. There are those of you that you should be down here. It's all right. 
I got something for you. Praise God. Those of you that are down here, congratulations. Congratulations on whatever reason you came down here for. We're going to take care of one right here at the altar. If you would, lift your hands to the great, mighty God, the one from whom our help comes. And would you repeat this after me? Say, Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So therefore, I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart that he is my Savior, my Lord, and my Redeemer. Jesus, come into my heart. Save me now. I thank you for your resurrected life, your word, and the power of the Holy Spirit that lives in me. And I am glad about it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and so be it. If you would, there's a gentleman right there holding the Bible up. Would you please follow him? He's going to take you to a place of just to share with you exactly what just happened and to answer any questions that you might have. Go with him now in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right. And you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.